ನಮೋ ತಸ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಂಭಾಸಂಬುಧಸ್ಸಮ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವೀಕ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಎ ನ್ಯೂ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಕರಣೀಯ ಮೆತ್ತ ಸುತ್ತ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಬುದ್ಧ ದಿಸ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲ್ ಲವ್ ಮೆತ್ತ last time we mentioned about the historical background of the sutta i will just briefly recapitulate it and then go on analyzing the sutta as a mode of training of the mind leading to the development of virtue which in turn leading to freedom of mind nibbana this sutta like any other sutta of the buddha is one way of practicing the the middle path approach of the buddha which he discovered under the bodhi tree on the full moon day of vaisakha in his very first sutta the buddha said that here is a path which has not been mentioned which has not been heard before by anyone whether in the human or divine world it is his specific discovery and in the form of the noble eightfold path which is another name for the middle path now all that the buddha taught throughout his 45 years of mission of compassion everything every sutta it is said 84000 pathways have been chiseled out by the buddha to climb upon the mount leading to the summit state of spiritual perfection nibbana or bodhi now metta sutta is one such sutta where through the practice and philosophy of universal love how one can achieve how one can fulfill the middle path approach or the noble eightfold path and reach nibbana bodhi enlightenment this sutta has three stages as it is with the noble eightfold path namely sila samadhi and panya sila means virtue born of purification of morality once one trains the mind in the practice of morality and purifies the moral practice it leads to the development of the mind in in all its aspects and developing the the potentials that are inside the mind the mind is a mind m i n e it is the very source of all virtue all knowledge all power leading to freedom from worldly existence so through sila one trains the mind in order to develop it leading to freedom of mind sila samadhi panya so today we will read out the sutta once again and then take up the first stage of the a uh, noble eight fold path which is shila as adumbrated by this sutta in what form should shila be perfected purified and thus develop the develop, leading to development of mind and freedom we will read out the sutta in english
whoso his welfare seeks to promote, having glimpsed the state of perfect peace, should be able, honest and upright, gentle in speech, meek and not proud. He should be contented, easy to support, not over busy, and be simple in living. Tranquil in his sense, let him be prudent, not brazen, nor fawning on families. He should refrain from any action that gives the wiser reason to reprove. May all beings be happy and secure. May all be well disposed at heart. Whatever living creatures there be, without exception, weak or strong, long or huge, middle-sized, short, minute or bulky, whether visible or invisible, and those living afar or near, the born and those seeking birth, may all beings be happy. Let none deceive or decry his, decry his fellow anywhere with resentment or hate. Let none wish another's harm. Just as with her own life, a mother shields her own, her only child, so let him have a mind of boundless love for all beings. Let him cultivate a mind of boundless love for all throughout the universe in all its height, depth and breadth, love that is unrestricted and beyond hatred or enmity. Whether he stands, walks, sits or lies, as long as he is awake, let him maintain this mindfulness of love, which is deemed here in this world as a divine state. Holding no wrong views, virtuous, and with vision of the ultimate Nibbana, having overcome all sensual desire, Kama, never in a womb is he born again. May all beings who are suffering be free from suffering. May all beings who are in fear be free from fear. May all beings who are grieving be free from grief. Now this is the translation of the Karaniya Metta Sutta in English. Now it has it stands for three stages of training, development and purification of the mind. So the first is the Sila part, training the mind in uh, moral purification and thus developing it leading to freedom. We shall now take up that aspect of this sutta where one trains oneself. Note the word training, it means disciplining. It is a self-imposed discipline 
by which one builds virtue within and this sutta provides 15 such states of virtue as expression of universal love. Metta to be practiced in the form of these virtues. In other words, this is metta in action. Every virtue is metta in action. Now it is said, whoso his welfare seeks to promote. Welfare here means atta, that is the true welfare. True welfare is when one seeks freedom from worldly existence. Freedom from this recurring existence. Coming again and again, being born again and again, dying again and again, and be reborn again and again. Endlessly one, move, go, one moves on and on in the wheel of samsara, the wheel of life. So true welfare should mean one who seeks to be free from samsara, from reckoning existence. So one who seeks such a welfare, having glimpsed, having understood clearly with the mind that there is a thing called freedom when there is a thing called bondage. If there is dukkha, suffering in the world, in hundred different ways, there is also sukha, true happiness, born of peace, freedom from conflict, freedom from hatred, and freedom from all, all sorts of, uh, you see, enmity or hatred. So one who has glimpsed this, this state of perfect peace, it is only when we reach the state of perfect peace of Nibbana that all conflicts dissolve, all enmity and hatred evaporate, and there is peace because there is no conflict. There is no dichotomy which brings conflict and suffering. Now such a person who has a vision of this kind of freedom, in other words, before you train the mind on the path of metta, universal love, you have got to have a clear understanding of what you seek. What is the goal of life? What exactly you are seeking by practicing your spiritual life? If the goal is the ultimate peace, not the peace which is just momentary, here a, a person who is free, let us say, from suffering for the time being, enjoys a, a mode of peace. But that is only for a while. It passes away. So if peace to be everlasting peace, it can be only when one has gone beyond the samsaric bondages. So one who has glimpsed this kind of vision, of freedom and the possibility of reaching that freedom of Nibbana, he should be thus. So here virtue is spelt out very clearly how metta in action should be practiced. One, there are 15 such virtues. One, he should be able. Two, he should be honest. Three, he should be upright. Four, he should be gentle in speech. I mean by he, also she. He or she should be able, should be honest, should be upright, should be gentle in speech, should be meek and not proud. He or she should be contented and not seeking all the time, wanting this, wanting that, and ever discontented. No. He or she should be contented, be happy with what he or she has, so that he or she is easy to support. 
and not over busy, but be simple in living, tranquil in his or her senses, let him or her be prudent, wise, endowed with practical wisdom, and then he or she should not be brazen, shameless, too advanced, but, and, and also not fawn on families to please people in order to get something out. That kind of attitude will have to be given up. He or she should refrain from any action that gives the wiser reason to reprove. That why a person can find fault or see some blame a, 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 or blemishes in our action. So that only when one life, one is endowed with all these virtues, 15 of them as read out now, that one can truly pursue or one can practice the universal love. So the pursuit of universal love has to be based on cultivation of these virtues. So the universal love, the pursuit of universal love is in the form of the tremendous will which says, may all beings be happy and secure, may all be well disposed in heart, in heart. Sabbe satta bhavantu sukhitatta, may all beings be happy and secure, may all be well disposed at heart. Now this is the philosophy of universal love to be put into practice in action, that is metta in action. Now if we analyze one by one the nature of these 15 virtues which are nothing but metta in day-to-day -day life, metta in practice. Metta is universal love. Now it is said, he or she should be able, sakko, ujucha, sujucha. Sakko means saknoti, is able, is competent, can stand on his or own feet and not depend upon others. Now this as an expression of metta, please think deeply. Now people just pass the buck on onto somebody else's shoulder. They just make others to do things for themselves. I mean, is it right? When the thing you can do yourself, whether it is cleaning your shoe or washing your clothes or doing anything for that matter, or bringing a book from somewhere, you just tell so and so, come on, bring this, do this for me, do that. Now this is an attitude of making use of people for just as a self-aggrandizement, just for all one pleasing oneself. Now this pleasing oneself at the cost of others is something that uh, comes on the way to spiritual development. And it is the directly opposite of virtue. When you make use of others, when you make people others to do because you are a boss, you have many people under you, you have servant at home, so you boss about and say, come on, do this for me, do that. And you become, you see, make people do things for you. Now, this is directly contradictory to the philosophy of metta. A person who really says, may all beings be happy and secure. May all beings be well disposed at heart. Now, when that is the pursuit of philosophy that you have adopted, then there is no other goal. To do things oneself. 
be able, be competent to do anything and everything. If somebody else does it, why not you? So, <coughs> even the smallest thing. Now this requires, my dear, a measure of mindfulness. One has to cultivate mindfulness. Be heedful, appamada in Pali. Appamada in Sanskrit. That is, be heedful at all times. So, whenever there is a tendency to make people do things as though you are incompetent, as though you are not able to do that yourself, now that means nothing but perpetuation of self-illusion and working self-interest, self-centered approach to living. Now, metta means the very opposite of self-centered approach. So, when you do things yourself. I know a doctor who is, uh, maybe he is older than me, he's about 90 and odd. He washes his own clothes and he has been at the top level of his profession. He has, he has, uh, you see, he rose to the very height of his career, but he keeps on washing his own towel, his own cloth, he is this, he is that, even at this age. So his daughter and sons comes and tells me, you know, he does this himself as though we can't do for him. I say, well, you learn some lesson, my dear, for him. And don't, don't boast that you are, I am so-and-so's son or daughter. I have so much of wealth and I am at the high, at, you see, very well placed in society and all this. There is plenty, plenty to learn from him. The Buddha used to stitch his own robe. He, wear, he used to wear a robe with hundreds of stitches. Every time the robe will, the robe will have developed some kind of a hole or some, uh, something, he will just stitch it. He never bossed ever, never told, come on, do this for me, do that for me. No. He was supremely enlightened one. He had all embracing love and compassion. So he preferred to do things himself. So we should be able, should be very competent as metta in action, as putting into practice metta in practical life. Now, this is morality at its height. So morality is not just fulfilling the five shilas, there is the matter, no. Morality is all embracing. It shows itself in varieties of ways. And this is one way where one practices morality. Or the purification of morality. <laughs> By purifying morality, one purifies the mind. And by purifying the mind, one frees the mind. It is as simple as that. <laughs> so, one way of practicing universal love is by becoming competent, by becoming able to do things oneself and not be dependent and not be uh, making people do things for oneself and be self-centered. No. Now, this is the first form of practicing metta in action, according to this sutta. And when one is able, it is only then that one really promotes one's welfare, one's real welfare, leading to freedom of mind from worldly existence. And when one is able and really competent in this way, very consciously and developing doing things oneself so that one may not trouble somebody else. One may have love and a good feeling for others. Only when one has this kind of competence and ability that one can be honest. That is the second virtue. What is honesty? Honesty is that which means uh, to, 
to be in keeping with truth, to be in keeping with fairness. One can be fair, one can be truthful, and only when does that, that one becomes truly honest. So one has to be honest. Now you can see today, let's say in our own country, we uh, extrapolate this virtue in a wider field. Let us see, every Indian happened to be honest. Do you think that there will be any corruption in this society? We boast of our great atomic power and super, uh, super power status and what not. But the whole country is reeking with corruption. People all the time seeking bribe and giving bribe. Now, if people really care for themselves, their own well-being and the well-being of others, can they do that? But it has become an institution from top to bottom, you see, at the government level, at the uh, business, at various levels of business, everywhere there is corruption. Why? Honesty is given is uh, done away with. Suppose you practice honesty consciously and deliberately. And you say, no, let me be honest. And let me be straightforward. And we, uh, you say, not cheat anybody. Not harm anybody. Be honest in every manner. Now once you do that, you are developing tremendous virtue indeed. And virtue is nothing but an expression of metta in action. And this virtue can be expressed, the virtue of metta can be expressed as honesty, you see, in so many ways. You can express honesty in the form of bodily action. You can express honesty in the form of verbal action. You can be honest and truthful and not tell a lie or not carry tales from here to there, or not uh, just uh, belaboring people with harsh words, or just keep on gossiping, doing nothing. All this is lack of honesty to oneself. If you are really very serious about freeing your mind from your own bondages, you have got to be honest in your speech, You've got to be honest in your bodily actions. You can't hurt anybody if you are an honest person. You don't want to be hurt. Why must you hurt others? It's as simple as that. You can't go and kill any creature. We uh, indulge in himsa. The world is suffering today exactly because of this. Violence, violence, violence everywhere. If you are an honest person and you believe in the philosophy of metta, universal love, you cannot be violent. And violent, to, when one, a person is violent in action, beating, hitting, hurting, all that, you start with at home, you don't beat your children or your wife or your husband. All these things you don't do because you are you want to be honest to your uh, philosophy of life, which is metta. If the philosophy of life is to be, is to promote well-being of all, you can't be harsh, you can't be violent. You can't, be st you can't steal somebody else's thing, misappropriate, take bribe, none of these. You can't be sexually immoral, you can't uh, practice uh, you see, sexual uh, misconduct, you can't tell a lie. You can't go and drink and um, uh, see alcohol and then make a mess of yourself and harm everybody in the world. So, if you are really honest, you can't break the Panchashila. In other words, you have got to purify your life morally to be fully honest. To be in keeping with truth. Philosophy, what does philosophy mean? It means, you see, 
using reason, using reason and truth and the knowledge of truth leading to reality. So if you are using reason for everything in life to guide yourself and lead, lead yourself to truth, how can you be but honest? How can you be selfish? So only when one is able and competent and very uh, honest that one can be really straightforward, not before. That is upright. That is the third virtue enunciated in this sutta. You see, it should be able, honest and upright. Uprightness comes only when you speak to a principle of being right. Only when you are right that you can be upright. If you are uh, crooked, if you deceive others, or let others deceive you or somebody else, well, there is no uprightness. And so long a person is not upright and straight, a person can never cultivate virtue of metta and can never be happy in fact in life. One has to be learn to be upright and honest and be able, competent. When these virtues are practiced, it means, it simply means you are practicing metta in action. So metta in action must have an impact not only on one's own life, but also on the society. When you really practice universal love, you are having great concern for this society. You are concerned for everybody. You can't simply say, I am a Hindu, I am a Buddhist, I am a Jain, and therefore I must only love Buddhist and Jain and nobody else. Nonsense. Religion or any kind of discrimination has no place if you are practicing, if you are practicing metta. You have love for everybody, whether it's a Hindu or Muslim or Christian or anybody. Whether it's an Indian or a Pakistani or an American or anybody for that matter. No discrimination whatsoever. It's only when you are universal that you can pursue the path of universal love. And the, this path, pursuing of the path of metta, means metta in action to begin with. Metta through the cultivation of virtue to begin with. So that means the virtue of being competent everywhere under all circumstances. Don't wait for anybody to wait on you. Do things yourself. There is no harm. Why should we uh, shout on a driver and keep on, uh, you see, blaring the noise as some of my, this year, you know, the neighbors do that. They don't have the driver and all that nearby. They keep on pumping the, uh, the, um, the noise making, you see, and disturbing everybody around because they can easily uh, take the car and walk, uh, drive themselves. So now this, there are ever so many ways we can practice metta just by being competent, just by being able, just by being upright, just by being honest. This putting on air of a big band and what not is a source of death. It means a life of heedlessness. Now, by being able, honest and upright to be really, if one wants, uh, you see, one is able, honest and upright, then one's speech is bound to be gentle. One cannot be harsh. One doesn't want that somebody else be harsh to oneself. So why should we be harsh to somebody else? We can speak gently. We can speak uh, lovingly. So these are forms of metta, you see, practiced in daily life. <coughs> and metta in action in the form of some 
day to day virtue. That is what it is. So gentle in speech, meek and not proud. Pride comes only when one suffers from inferiority complex. When you really within yourself feel that you are really inferior person, not a competent person. You are not, uh, you see, an honest person, not an upright person. So only then you have these qualities like arrogance and pride and so on. So these six virtues adumbrated in this sutta, you see, are forms of metta in day-to-day -day life, metta in action. So today I will leave it at that. We will proceed. This is a uh, this is a series on metta, just as we start. We had a series on Mangala Sutta. So we will also have a series on metta bhavana. And metta can be practiced in so many ways, indeed, and it has to be practiced. If you want somebody to love you then you must know how to love others. If you want somebody to be able, you have to be able yourself, to be able yourself. If you want somebody to be honest, why not you be honest yourself and upright and be gentle in speech and be meek and not proud. So we'll continue with this series. These are all forms of virtue meaning Sheila. Srila, therefore, is not just five Srila, eight Srila, or ten Srilas. Practice once in a way? No. It's an every day-to-day -day life of virtue. With this, I conclude, may the grace of Lord Buddha, the embodiment of metta, universal love, surround your lives with wisdom and well-being. May you all be happy and will. Sukino Bhavantu.